to think that somebody was here 5,000 years ago organising this and to think we can come now and witness what they planned, that is a miracle. I think it must be as close to immortality as you could hope to get. To build something and have people come along to watch it in perfect working order 5,000 years after you've lived. Find out what's happening here at the mound now. We spoke to Professor O'Kelly. Well, the monument, as you have heard, is 4,000 years old and now needs some repairs. We should do some investigation around the edge of the mound before these repairs are undertaken. We have a, a quite new and intriguing problem to solve, perhaps next year when we can excavate farther into the mound. On a remote hill in the rolling countryside of Ireland lies a monument shrouded in mystery. This ancient structure, known as Newgrange, has perplexed archaeologists, historians and scientists for centuries. It is not merely a burial site, it is a marvel of prehistoric engineering. It is one of the largest, one of the most highly decorated tombs of this type in Western Europe. But more than that, it may be the key to a deeper secret, a celestial code, perhaps the world's first star map, etched in stone by a civilization long before the written word. Newgrange was rediscovered by accident in 1699 when labourers, working for landowner Charles Campbell, unearthed the entrance while quarrying stone. What they found was extraordinary. A massive mound circled by 97 enormous curbstones, some engraved with swirling patterns that seemed to dance with ancient meaning. The true purpose of the structure has remained elusive ever since. Was it a tomb, a monument to the dead, or did it serve a far greater purpose? The monument is enormous, standing 12 metres tall and covering over an acre. Its construction required an estimated 200,000 tonnes of stone and earth. Some of these stones, weighing up to 10 tonnes each, were transported from quarries up to 80 kilometres away. Without modern machinery, how did ancient builders move such massive stones, and for what purpose? How did this great big stone and so many of them get up here? We think that many of these big stones were lying about on the land surface since the end of the Ice Age. At the heart of Newgrange is a narrow passage leading to a central chamber. This passage aligns perfectly with the rising sun on the winter solstice. For a few brief moments, the sun's rays illuminate the chamber, casting light on the stone carvings within. This celestial alignment is no accident. It suggests that the builders of New Grange possessed a sophisticated understanding of astronomy, mathematics, and engineering. An astonishing achievement for a culture from 3200 BCE. The carved symbols, spirals, lozenges, and circular motifs further add to the intrigue. I think you can see here this panel of zigzag or chevron ornamentation. Scholars have debated their meaning for centuries. Are they simple decorations? or do they hold a deeper significance? Some suggest that the spirals might represent celestial patterns and ancient map of the stars. Others believe the carvings may have been used to track the movement of the sun and moon, creating an early calendar system. But perhaps Newgrange wasn't just an observatory. Some researchers suggest it could be the earliest known attempt to map the cosmos, a structure designed to help its builders navigate the heavens. It raises the question, how did people in an era before written records possess such precise astronomical knowledge? The accuracy with which New Grange was built has sparked intense debate. The positioning of the passageway so that the sun reaches its innermost chamber on the exact day of the winter solstice seems almost impossible to achieve without advanced tools. Did the builders rely solely on generations of careful observation, or might they have had access to lost knowledge? Some speculate that Newgrange is the product of an advanced, forgotten civilization, one whose understanding of the cosmos and engineering far surpassed what we thought possible for the time. In the nearby Boyne Valley, other monuments such as Noth and Douth also show striking astronomical alignments. These sites appear to form a connected complex, with each monument playing a role in a grand cosmic design. The region may have been a center of celestial observation, with its monuments serving as more than just tombs, 
but as places of knowledge, perhaps even communication with the stars. The transportation of massive stones across great distances adds another layer of mystery. The granite slabs, some weighing up to 10 tons, were quarried from sites 80 kilometers away. The builder's ability to move these stones without modern technology remains an unanswered question. Did they use basic tools, or could they have possessed techniques that have been lost to time? This leads us to one of the most tantalizing ideas surrounding Newgrange, the possibility of a global connection between ancient structures. The precision seen at Newgrange mirrors that found in other megalithic sites, such as Stonehenge in England and the pyramids of Egypt. These monuments, spread across continents, all show extraordinary astronomical precision. Could they be part of a larger ancient network, linked by a shared purpose? Perhaps even a shared origin? As we delve deeper into the mysteries of Newgrange, we are left with more questions than answers. Some suggest that these monuments were part of a prehistoric effort to chart the cosmos. Others propose more radical theories that the builders were influenced by an unknown advanced culture, or even extraterrestrial beings who shared their knowledge of the stars with early humans. While these ideas remain speculative, the mysteries of Newgrange continue to captivate researchers. What if the purpose of Newgrange goes far beyond our current understanding? Could it hold the key to unlocking a forgotten chapter of human history? One in which our ancestors were far more advanced than we ever imagined. As our exploration of Newgrange deepens, we begin to see it as more than just a tomb or a monument to the dead. The precise alignment of its passage with the winter solstice suggests that it may have been used as a kind of Stone Age observatory. A tool for tracking the sun and the stars and possibly much more. Let's examine the carvings once again. The spirals and other motifs may not be random decorations. Some researchers have proposed that these designs represent the movement of celestial bodies, early attempts to chart the sky. If this is true, then Newgrange could be one of the oldest star maps in existence, created by a culture that sought to understand their place in the universe through the study of the heavens. But Newgrange is not the only site where these motifs appear. Similar symbols have been found on ancient monuments across the globe, from the deserts of the American Southwest to the mountains of Peru. This raises a fascinating question. Were these cultures separated by vast distances somehow connected? Could they have shared knowledge of the stars, despite the geographical barriers? One of the most intriguing aspects of Newgrange is the possibility that its builders possessed knowledge that has since been lost. How else can we explain the precision of its construction or the complexity of the carvings? Some researchers suggest that there may have been a forgotten civilization, one with a profound understanding of astronomy and engineering that passed this knowledge down through generations. In recent years, new technologies have allowed scientists to take a closer look at Newgrange. Ground-penetrating radar has revealed hidden chambers and passageways beneath the surface, suggesting that the monument is far more complex than previously thought. What secrets might these undiscovered areas hold? Could they provide further evidence of the monument's astronomical purpose? Nearby, the mound at Noth adds to the intrigue. This site contains over 200 decorated stones, making it one of the largest concentrations of megalithic art in Europe. Like Newgrange, Noth shows evidence of astronomical alignment, with its passages oriented toward both the equinoxes and the solstices. These sites may have formed a kind of prehistoric observatory complex, where ancient astronomers gathered to study the movements of the heavens. But the mysteries don't end there. Some theorists believe that the purpose of Newgrange and other ancient monuments has been deliberately hidden. They argue that the true nature of these sites has been suppressed by modern institutions, fearing what it might reveal about the origins of human civilization. If Newgrange truly is a star map, what does that say about the level of knowledge possessed by its builders? Could the alignment of these ancient monuments with celestial bodies be evidence of a forgotten age of exploration, an era when humans sought to map not just the Earth, but the heavens as well? Or is there a more profound explanation, one that challenges everything we thought we knew about our ancestors? As new discoveries continue to emerge, one thing is certain. Newgrange is a monument to a forgotten people who understood the universe in ways we are only just beginning to comprehend. The more we learn about this ancient structure, the clearer it becomes that its secrets may hold the key to understanding our place in the cosmos. 
What other revelations await us as we continue to explore Newgrange and its sister monuments? Could this be the world's first star map? A gift from an advanced civilization? Or perhaps even a message from beyond our world? The mystery continues to unfold and with it our understanding of the past grows ever more complex. The answers may be closer than we think. If you enjoyed the video, you might find this one on Mohenjo-Daro intriguing. The sudden transformation of this ancient city into glass remains a captivating mystery. Theories range from an ancient nuclear explosion to intense heat from a fire or meteorite impact. The true cause remains uncertain, adding to the enigma surrounding the disappearance of this remarkable civilization. Mohenjo-Daro in this valley, the buildings turned to glass. The sand turned to glass and the bodies are still laying in the street right now today, holding hands, never been scavenged by animals. They had no historical evidence of that. No, there's no test. It was not mentioned in any books. It was really? not, yep. It was, it was found as an accident. They, they found it by accident. This is evidence of a nuclear war. That's 3,000 plus degree temperature weapons fire. They explain how uh, the devastation looks, right? They talk about how high the temperature goes, how it looked like a sun when the, when the explosion happened, how all the vegetation was completely wiped off and there were no plants or trees growing for the next 12 to 25 years. They describe them, describe them as weapons that once released can't be revolted or can't be turned back and that they will obliterate any area, any city. Uh, and they say that uh, some of the, one of the weapons can destroy any man on three worlds. It's crazy stuff. And this is where Oppenheimer got his famous quote when he yeah. obviously tested the nuke. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds.